Спасибо. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, a seasonal note. Throughout the fall, on Sundays, we have focused on reading through the Gospel according to St. Luke. And then we have just, uh, we are just finishing up now this uh, uh, insertion, as it were, into that process that began the Sunday before Nativity. We read the genealogy of Christ. And so we stop reading from the Gospel of Luke. And throughout this season up until today, we switch and we're reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. And it's very specific in that Gospel. We start in chapter 1, verse 1 and we methodically work our way all the way through the fourth chapter. And so a number of the events that we have seen and of course what we're getting to today, as I mentioned, the genealogy of Christ, his nativity, the visit of the wise men to the manger, the flight of Joseph and Mary with the baby Jesus into Egypt for safety, the killing of the holy innocents by Herod, we hear about Jesus Christ's baptism in the River Jordan. If we'd had a liturgy yesterday, the reading was prescribed, Jesus' temptation in the wilderness for 40 days. And then we come to the reading that we have today. That's all where we've been in those readings. Uh, for me, in studying and preparing my homilies, it's something of a, a pleasure because I'm just working my way through that gospel reading and i do it every year and so it's just kind of this nice revisiting that we have well after today we switch back and for a few more weeks we're back in the gospel of luke but as we get to february we start looking ahead we'll start the triodian season that's where we have those pre-lenten readings and preparations the publican and the pharisee the prodigal son the Last Judgment, and the Sunday of Forgiveness. That's all in February. So we, we'll get back to Luke for a little bit next week. So how do we finish up here with this particular reading? It's this key transition, and it's following on the tales of what we heard at the uh, Liturgy for Theophany the other night. Theophany, of course, the baptism of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. And St. John the Forerunner as a key element there. And we heard about in those readings and in all that preparation coming up to Theophany, the ministry of St. John the Forerunner and his message, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And as I preached the other night, John is the last of the great prophets of the Old Testament. And he's telling people, get your act together as it were because the kingdom of heaven is at hand, meaning it will be here soon. It's imminent. It's almost arrived. So today, we hear those same words from Jesus Christ's mouth, but there's been a transition at this point. We hear at the beginning of the reading, John has been arrested and will be beheaded soon by Herod. And that's a signal for Jesus. This is all taking place down near Jerusalem, where all the power is. And we hear that Jesus, being prudent and knowing that he has a ministry, leaves that area, and he's nowhere near that. He goes up to the Sea of Galilee, which is out in the country. And we hear that he begins his ministry in earnest. John's finished. Jesus begins. Well, there, there's an interesting detail here. I, I just, this is something of a parenthetical, but I thought it was interesting to include. We hear this, this piece from the prophet Isaiah, from the Old Testament. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, towards the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. It's this reference. What's this Zebulun and Naphtali thing? Well, in the Old Testament, 
when the Hebrews came and settled in the Holy Land after being delivered from e Egypt, the 12 tribes divided the area into 12 regions. And so each tribe had their own region, a state as it were. So the tribes of Zebulon and Naphtali were up around the Sea of Galilee. And later in the Old Testament, when the Hebrews were conquered and taken into captivity, the first two tribes that were conquered, because they were the furthest north, were Zebulon and Naphtali. So in a sense, there was this loss for the Hebrews in that captivity. <clears throat> so the message here, and why Jesus is pointing out this prophecy, is that the first place he's going to do his work is the first place where there was something lost for the Hebrew people. It's a subtle thing. But I know every year we read that and we're like, okay, Zebulon, Naphtali, what about that? So Jesus begins his ministry. And he mimics John's, as I said. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But the sense with which Jesus uses that phrase is different than John's. John's, of course, is, as I said, the kingdom's coming soon. But the whole message that we had in the Theophany liturgy is that Jesus Christ basically, basically was supplanting that baptism that John was offering, just this symbolic washing to wash away sins, and that Jesus imparted into baptism what we know and understand now, that it's the power of the Holy Spirit and the change in people. And so when Jesus says, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he's saying the kingdom of heaven is here now, and he means in himself. And it's fundamentally about this issue of baptism. So part of what we emphasize during this season is baptism and water. I blessed a bunch of water the other night. House blessing season has begun. Part of that is bringing that blessing of the theophany waters into everyone's homes. It's also a time for us to consider our own baptisms. Quite often we consider baptism as an event in our past, just something that happened. Yes, on this date I was baptized and I have a certificate from the church that says this was when I was baptized. And occasionally we might need that certificate for something else like when we're getting married. Oh yes, I've been baptized in the church. Yes, I can be married in the church, that sort of thing. But we'll often have that as a distant memory. But the reality is our day-to-day -day life in the church is about living into our baptism. As I often say, it's not just about being grafted into the body of Christ, that's the water part, but it's also the imparting of the Holy Spirit, a Pentecost as it were. And we have these wonderful statements that are made in the epistle that we just heard. And it gives word that some should be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Each of us has been given that. So what does that look like in the life of a parish and living into our baptism? It's an opportunity, as I say, to reflect on that. How do I live my faith out? in the context of my local parish? Well, I think it happens in a number of ways. Some of us are very, very involved in the life of the church. We have multiple responsibilities. We do multiple things. We have that image. We, we wear multiple hats in this parish. And often that is about just getting things done. There's work to be done in the parish, and so I'll go ahead and I'll take care of that and I'll do that. If you are one of those folks, I would encourage you, reflecting on your baptism, what do you see in that as your ministry? It's not necessarily everything that you're doing, but there's probably something in there that you have a gift for and a vocation for, and something that could be nurtured and developed over time. 
So there's that group. Now I know that for some of us, we come to church and we have an occasional responsibility of some sort. I might, you know, be a coffee hour host once a month, something like that. But there's not necessarily something that I do week in, week out for the parish. I think the opportunity there is to, to ask the question, well, I, I do occasional things. Is there something I could be doing in the life of the parish, living into my baptism on a regular basis? How can I help the parish on a regular basis? And that's something that you could consider. And then kind of in the, the final category, I know some of us, we live in this, this place where, well, I come to church. I don't necessarily help with things around the church, but I come to church. And I set this bar just very low because I know setting a bar in and of itself could be asking a lot. And just ask the question, what's one thing I could do different this year where I'm a little bit more involved in the life of the parish? It doesn't have to be a big responsibility, but what could I do to be more part of this body? And over time, I could consider those things of helping in other areas. Because if we all do that consideration, it just strengthens the body. And a strong body supports one another, the members one another. And we're all built up and we're all edified. So we have this final story in the Gospel of Matthew, before we switch back to Luke. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this opportunity to consider our baptism and how we can grow into that further. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Christ.